So now I just wanted to show you all of the dogs with their pet outfits. So this is my small Siberian Husky dog. Here is the extra small Siberian Husky dog. And again, my small Siberian Husky and my large Siberian Husky dog. If you like the style of my extra small Husky dog, Siberian Husky dog, I used for her main color, I used Pound of Love, like a turquoise color. And then for the alternate color, like for her snout and for the eyes and ears, I used a variegated Bernat baby yarn. Then I just wanted to show the back of the pet outfits. So you can see where I used the zipper on the small Siberian, and he also has a, a collar on the pet outfit. And here is the pet outfit for the extra small Siberian Husky Dog. Here's another version if you don't want the zipper for the small Siberian Husky Dog. And then for the large Siberian Husky Dog, I put the zipper. But again, you can also you make this version without the zipper. You can modify it and make it the same way. There's a separate video tutorial for the nurse's hat. There's a separate video tutorial for the crochet Santa doll's hat. For my pet outfit, I wanted to show how to place a zipper along the back of the pet outfit. And this is just an example with my extra small pet outfit. This one is really cute and I'll probably be using this on one of my small Siberian Husky dogs. And I have a separate video tutorial for those. If you like this one, it's by Bond Company. Apparel for dogs, fits back sizes 11 to 13 inches, extra small. So again, I'm going to show how to place the zipper on the back of the crochet pet outfit. And then I'm going to size it for a large dog. So this one has the Velcro. I got this one from Walmart for a really good deal. Fits large dogs. And this is just an example, Labrador and Boxer, because I know somebody wanted to make a pet outfit for that would fit a Boxer dog. So that's why I'm using this. And also it'll fit my large Siberian Husky dog. Now this pet outfit has the Velcro on there. So for my pet outfit, I'm going to be showing how to use the zipper style. I just like that better. But I like this one, this pet outfit, because I try to pick outfits that have the soft, um, soft fabric on them. What's nice about this one is that it is reversible. So you can actually reverse it and use the soft, fuzzy side if you wanted to. The other thing that I liked about this one is the little pocket flap that it had on it. And for that price, it was a really good deal. The zipper that I used is this sport zipper, 14 inches long. I used my 5.75 millimeter crochet hook. You're also going to need a tapestry needle and a pair of scissors. The yarn that I used is by Red Heart Super Saver, Turqua is the color. Here's some more information about this yarn. I also used, I love this yarn, metallic colored white. Here's some information about this yarn. If you're using a different yarn, then you're going to want to use your tape measure to make sure you have the right size. I'm going to show you the measurements for mine because if you use a different yarn, you may have a different size than mine. I'm going to show you how to make the chain, but first I want to go over some of the measurements. To make this wave pattern stitch, you need to have a chain of 10 or multiple of 10. So here I have a chain of 20, and that measures 6 inches, which is what I want. 
So if you use a different yarn choice, you have to make sure that it measures six inches with your chain. But if you like the wave pattern I have, you also have to make sure that you're a multiple of 10. If you're not able to get the multiple of 10, you could make a multiple of five, and then that would give you one half wave at the end of the um, pet outfit. So you could use a multiple of five, but you would prefer to use a multiple of 10. So now we're gonna start with the main color that you want for your pet outfit. For mine, I'm gonna be using the turquoise color, or turquoise color. So you're gonna take the yarn, you're gonna fold it over on itself to form a loop. And again, I'm using my 5.75 millimeter crochet hook. Put it right through the loop, hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb. Then you're gonna yarn over, turn the hook upside down and bring the yarn through the loop for a slip knot. Go ahead and cinch that knot down and then cinch the yarn loop around your hook. You don't want it too tight, you don't want it too loose. Then you're gonna make your chain. I'm just gonna show four of them on video tutorial. So just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for one, two, three, four. So again, I'm finishing a chain of 20 for my yarn choice and the size for mine. I already showed you how to measure yours. Go ahead and finish your chain and then come back. Now you want to take and hold that last stitch that you made with your middle finger and thumb. We're going to move up to the next row. So now you're going to make a chain of one. Then you're going to go into the third chain from the hook, which is the stitch below the one that you're holding. So this one's the first one, second, and then third. And you're gonna make, you're gonna bring up a loop. So go into that third stitch, or third chain from the hook, bring up a loop. Then make your single crochet. So that will count as your second stitch. So that first chain one that you made is your first stitch, and then you just made your second stitch. Now you're gonna make your third single crochet, go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, make a single crochet, next stitch, bring up a loop for your fourth single crochet, and then the next stitch for your fifth. So now you have a total of five single crochet and you're counting that first chain as your first single crochet. Now you're going to make one double crochet into the next five stitches. So the first thing you're going to do is just yarn over, go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, make your double crochet, And you're going to make one double crochet into each of the next five stitches. I'm going to go ahead and finish these with you. So I'm making one double crochet in each of the next five stitches. So this is my fourth and my fifth. So you just completed one full wave. So that's why you need a multiple of 10. But if you had multiples of five, then you would just have a half wave on one side, which is okay too, that will work as well. So now you're just gonna repeat this pattern you should have exactly one more wave in the last 10 stitches. So now you're going to make one single crochet into each of the next five stitches.
Then you're going to make one double crochet into the last five stitches. And if you don't have enough stitches, then that means that you did something wrong. So you'll have to start over. It's better to start over now to see where the error happened and correct it then to keep going my last double crochet and it ended perfectly this is what your pattern should look like so far so now this is actually half of the wave we're going to complete the second half now on the next row so because we finished with a double crochet, we want double crochets on this next row. So to start, what you're going to do is make a chain of three. Turn your work. Then that first chain three will count as the first double crochet for the next row. And then you can see how it's directly over the previous rows double crochet. Now we're going to go into the next stitch and make our second double crochet. So you just yarn over, go into the next stitch, bring up a loop. You can see how I went under both loops of the stitch. Bring up a loop, make your double crochet, So I finished my second double crochet, now I'm going to make my third double crochet in the next stitch. You see how it's lining up with the previous rows double crochets, which is what you want. Then you're going to make one single crochet into the next five stitches, which would be directly over the single crochets of the previous row. So I'm going to make a single crochet. Then I'm going to make one single crochet into the second stitch. That's my third. fourth, fifth. You just completed a wave. So you can see here the multiple of 10. Now you're going to be making one double crochet into the next five stitches. And again, they will be directly over the previous rows, double crochets. This is what my work looks like so far. Now, you're just going to make one single crochet into the remaining five stitches. stitch for my fifth single crochet on the end. Now we're going to move up to the next row and since we've completed this this is our previous two rows you can see that we have a full wave on those two rows. Now we're going to move over the double crochets so that they're over the single crochets. So you're going to chain three, one, two, three. Then go ahead and turn your work. 
Now I just want to show you, we're going to work a little bit differently with the stitch. So I just want to show you that this first chain three is directly over the previous rows single crochet and you can see the little bit of an upslope here on the stitch below that chain three and we're going to be working into this next stitch over but I wanted to show you this stitch so if you kind of turn it you can see this is the stitch that we'll be working into and my tapestry needle is underneath the stitch and I want to show you that by going in the center of that stitch with my tapestry needle you have a back loop of the stitch. That's the stitch that we're going to be working into. So when you go with your crochet hook you're going to go down the center of the stitch with your crochet hook and you're going to grab that back loop with your crochet hook. So now I'm going to make a double crochet into the next stitch over but I'm only going to grab the back loop of the stitch. So you're going to yarn over, you're going to go down the center of the next stitch and you're going to grab that back loop with your crochet hook. So you're grabbing the back loop only, you're going to bring up a loop and then you're going to finish your double crochet. And you're going to do that one double crochet into the next three stitches because you want a total of five double crochet and you're going to make it into the back loop only of the stitch. Mark that again. And what that does is it creates a little bit of a ridge separating the two waves. Now what you're going to do, for the whole row you're going to be working into the back loop of the stitch. So now we finished our first set of five double crochet. We're going to make single crochets, so five single crochets. The first single crochet will be in the next stitch in the back loop only of the stitch. So here's one. Two single crochet. Three. Four. And five. So we completed our first half wave. Remember we need the next row to complete the wave just like we did for the first two rows. And then you just repeat for the next wave. So I'm going to make one double crochet into the next five stitches using the back loop only. I'm going to go ahead and finish it with you so you can kind of see how I'm making the stitches. And then you're going to make one single crochet into the last five stitches in the back loop only. Let me just make sure I made the five. 
One, two, three, four, five. So now you can see the, the ridge that you created on the top of the previous two rows waves. Now we've just completed, this is our third row, we made a half wave. So we're going to complete the top of this wave. So we finished with a single crochet, so you're going to chain one, turn your work, and we're going to finish the top of the wave. So this time we don't want a ridge in the middle of the wave, so we're just going to grab both loops of the next stitch. So you're not grabbing the back loop only for this row. And you're going to make your single crochet. And remember we want five, so they should line up with the previous rows single crochets to complete the wave. Now you're going to make your double crochets, so you need five double crochets, and again, they're going to line up directly over the previous row's double crochets, and you can see how I'm grabbing both loops to complete the wave. So go ahead, now you know what to do, go ahead and finish this row, and then come back. So now I just finished the last part of the full wave, so you need two rows to complete a wave, and you can also see here's my two sets of double crochet and then over here two rows of double crochet. You're going to be alternating these so you'll see the alternation. If you don't see that then you know that you've done something wrong and you need to go back. So it's good to double check your work. And then on the back you can see the ridge. So the ridge will be on top of the completed wave. So you should have that ridge. On our next one we're going to create the ridge and you create that ridge by working into the back loop. So always make sure that the ridge is on the back side of your work. So now I'm going to show you the difference on how to get the ridge to stay on the same side of your work. Now we're going to move up to the next row. On the previous wave, you can see how we completed the wave. So now we're going to start with a single crochet for this next wave row. So you're going to chain one, turn your work, and now we're going to make a single crochet into the next stitch and because we want to create the ridge on top of this the previous rows completed wave you're going to work into the back loop again so you're going to go down the middle grab that back loop bring up a loop and make your single crochet and you can see how you're creating a ridge and it's on the same side as the ridge that you created at the top of the previous wave. So now you're just going to make one single crochet into each stitch until you have a total of five. So this is my fourth and my fifth. Then you're going to make one double crochet into the next five stitches, one single crochet into the next five stitches, and then end with one double crochet into the next five stitches, and you're working in all of the back loops for this row, and then come back. This is how my work looks so far, and then this is what it looks like on the other side. So you can check your work too, because here's my double crochet. Here's my double crochet, and then I'm starting to make my double crochet for this one. So we finished half of a wave so far. So because we only have half of a wave here, we want to complete it. So you know that you're going to make a chain of three. For your first double crochet for the next row. So go ahead and turn your work. 
And then you could see the previous row's double crochets that form the half wave from the previous row. Now you're going to make your double crochet into the next stitch. Now remember, this row is the, the middle or completion of your wave, so you don't want to work in the back loops for this one. You just want to work into both loops. So I'm going to make a double crochet into both loops because I don't want to create a ridge in the middle, <clears throat> excuse me, in the middle of my wave. And what I mean by a ridge is here. We want the ridge to only be on the top of the wave, completed wave. So you'll be working in the back loops when you're working at the top of a completed wave, which would be this row, which is the half row for the next wave. So now I'm finishing my total of five double crochet and I'm working into both loops. So far I have three, four, five. Now I'm going to make one single crochet into the next five stitches, grabbing both loops of the previous row stitch. and you can see how I completed the wave and how it's alternating. So I just finished that row. So I have two rows here, two rows here for a total of four, and then two rows here for a total of six. And you can see how the wave is alternating, which is what you want to do. Now I'm going to show you how to change colors. So I'm going to take my white metallic colored yarn. I'm going to bring up a loop. I'm going to go ahead and chain one. Then I'm just going to turn my work. I'm going to cut my previous colored yarn. And then I'm going to go ahead and tie a knot. Then you can go ahead and turn your work. And you're going to look at your previous wave. I completed my previous wave. And there's a single crochet right here. So I'm going to start with a chain of three. One two, three, and then I'm going to go ahead and turn my work. I'm going to move my loose yarn ends out of the way for now. And here you can see this counts as your first double crochet for the next row. And you're going to work into that back loop because for this row you want to create the ridge on top of the previous row's wave, completed wave. So you're going to yarn over, you're going to go into the next stitch over in the back loop only. So you're going to go down the center of the stitch. I'm going to go behind my loose yarn ends. I'm going to bring up a loop and then complete my double crochet. And then you can kind of cinch the loose yarn ends as you work. So that's my second. Third. And I'm kind of pulling my loose yarn ends as I need to. fourth and my fifth double crochet. So you can see how I'm moving my wave over. So here's my previous rows 
completed wave and now I'm moving it over here and I'm also creating my ridge that separates the wave and I'm starting my first half wave. So then I know that I need my next stitch. Don't skip a stitch. Make sure you go into the right stitch. So now I need one single crochet into the next five stitches. So go ahead, finish this row, and then come back. So this is how my work looks so far. And what's nice about this pattern is you can double check your work. So if the ridges aren't lining up like they should, creating the waves, and the double crochets aren't alternating, then you know that you might have done something wrong. And also the sets of five also help you with your count so that you know that you're working the pattern correctly. Now I'm going to move up to the next row to complete the wave. So here I know that I had a single crochet in the previous row, so I'm going to chain one, turn my work, and since this is completing the wave, then I know that I want to make a single crochet going through both loops for this row to complete the wave. So again, five single crochet that line up with the previous rows, single crochets, and then five double crochet using both loops of the previous rows stitch. So go ahead, finish this row, and then come back. And this is what it looks like after finishing the wave in this color. So for mine, I'm going to alternate using three waves in one color, one wave in the alternate color, and then changing back to blue. So I'm going to change back to my blue color now. So I'm going to go ahead, bring up a loop. And then I'm going to chain one, turn my work, cut the previous colored yarn, and then tie a knot. Then I'm going to go ahead and resume. So now I can see that on my previous wave I finished with a double crochet. So now, because I'm alternating and I want to start my new half wave, I'm going to be making a single crochet here. So I'm doing a yarn over, make chain one, which counts as my single crochet. Go ahead and turn your work. And again, I'm working along the top of the wave, so I'm going to be working in the back loop only, creating the ridge. So I'm going to go into the center of the next stitch into the back loop only. I'm also going to go behind my loose yarn ends and bring up a loop and complete my second single crochet because my first chain one counts as my first single crochet for the row. And then I'm going to finish making my set of five single crochet in the back loops of the previous rows stitches. And then I'm going to make my set of five double crochet in the back loop of the previous row stitches, creating the ridge that I want, separating the waves. This is how my work looks so far, and you can see the ridges that are created by working in the back loops. And then on the other side, this is what it looks like. And it's fun to put in some color changes. So you can have fun with the color changes. So now I'm going to go ahead and finish the top of my wave. So the previous row was a double crochet. So I'm going to make a double crochet, a chain three. One, two, three. Go ahead and turn my work. 
And then since this is completing the wave, I'm going to be working into both loops of the next stitch to complete a double crochet. So go ahead, finish this row to complete your wave and then come back. So this is what my work looks like so far and I can double check my work by looking at my double crochet in the waves and you can see how they are alternating which is what you want and then on the back side you can see the beautiful ridges that are created on the reverse side. This is a baby blanket that I'll have a separate video tutorial for. It's using the same wave pattern except for this baby blanket I made the ridges on every row so you can do that too if you wanted to and then you could see the different colors. I used a variegated yarn and alternated that through just changing up the pattern with the variegated yarn and then this is what it looks like on the opposite side. So you can have fun with this pattern and use different colors to create a beautiful wave pattern. So that's all there is to it. You're going to keep repeating this pattern and changing colors however you want for your pet outfit. So for mine, I'm actually going to measure the left and right sides starting at the bottom. So the bottom will line up with the bottom of the zipper, one, one panel on each side of the zipper. And you're just going to line it up with the zipper all the way up. And I marked it here where I want my collar to go. So it lines up with the bottom of the zipper. And I'm just going to give you the measurements for mine for the collar. So it's going to be about two and a half inches for the collar. So you're going to leave that part open on the zipper. So when I come back I'll let you know how many rows that I had and also what the measurement is for the length. So now I've finished all of my rows of waves and it measures approximately 13 inches in length and I have a total of, I'm going to count the waves, so that's two rows, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen waves, or thirty rows. And then you can see how it lines up with the zipper, leaving that two and a half inch top for the collar. So then when you finish doing that go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and bring enough yarn through to bury into your work. So go ahead and make another panel just like this one. And if you like the way I did the colors I had three of the blue waves, one white, three of the blue, one white, four of the blue, one white, and then two of the blue. I finished the two back pieces, so now I'm going to take my tapestry needle and just bury the loose yarn end. I'm going to use this as my right side and the ridged side will be the wrong side. And then I'm just going to take my tapestry needle and weave the loose yarn end through the stitches on the wrong side. And then I like to go back as well. Just to make sure it won't come out. And then just trim your loose yarn end. I used a safety pin to hold the zipper in place. Now you can take your safety pin and place it right 
at the top, line up the bottom so that the zipper is lined up with the bottom of the panel and then you're going to bring the rest of the panel up to the two and a half inch mark and then go ahead and safety pin the zipper to the panel on the one side Then you're going to take your tapestry needle with the blue colored yarn. Go ahead and line up. Make sure it's in line right along with the zipper. And if some of it hangs down on the end, that's okay. Then you're going to take and sew coming up from the wrong side. Make sure that you have enough of a loose yarn end on the back side. And then you're only going to sew the blue portion in place. And you're making about a centimeter stitch. And then you want to tie a knot on the back side. Then you're just going to go and make your next stitch. And I'm making about a centimeter stitch. on the front and the back. So you can't really tell on the front and then this is what it will look like on the back. And then you don't want to go across the white portion on the right side. So now I'm going to skip over that white portion and come up just past it. And at the same time, you want to make sure that you're not tangling the loose yarn end. And then just continue taking about a centimeter stitch on the front side. You can see that when I skipped the white portion, I had a little bit of a longer stitch on the back, but that's okay. And then you just continue sewing it all along the edge of the zipper. And then you're going to do the same thing with the opposite panel. And when you're sewing the panels in place, these back panels in place, make sure that you have the right side facing up. On mine, the right side facing up is the side without the ridges. So I'm putting the ridges towards the inside or the wrong side. So I just finished sewing up to the top of the panel. So I'm going to turn it over and onto the back and then I'm just going to tie a knot in the last stitch that I made. Then, after you're finished tying your knot, 
you can take and trim. Make sure you leave a good loose yarn end for burying into your work. Then you just take that loose yarn end and just weave it through the back side of the work. And again, I like to go back through a couple times. You don't have to, but I like to do that. Oop. Try that again. just to make sure that the loose yarn end doesn't come out. Then you can take and trim the loose yarn end. Go ahead and bury your loose yarn ends and then you need to sew down the white portion with the white colored yarn. So when I sewed the white portion, I only made the stitches over the white portion of the yarn and you can see that for the longer blue yarn portion, I just kind of sewed over it with the white portion yarn. And now I'm just going to bury the loose yarn ends for the white portion. On the other side, it looks beautiful. You can't even tell the stitches. For the top part of the back part of the outfit, you can see here's the back, the left and the right. The right side is up, and I've already sewn the left collar in place and also the strap that goes around the front of the dog. I'm going to show you how to make these two pieces. So for the one piece that wraps around the neck of the dog, I made one wave pattern. So you can see I started with a chain, it has a chain of 20 or 20 stitches and I completed one full wave. So you can go ahead and make that one. I made the collar a little bit different. I'm going to show you how to make that. But the strap that goes around the neck, you'll be able to make that. I'm just going to give you the measurement of it in case you're using a different yarn, but you want the same size as me. So mine measures almost seven inches, about seven inches, and it's about one and a half inches for one of the waves, the double crochet portion, and then for the single crochet portion it's about an inch. For the collar, go ahead and make a chain of 14 Then hold that last stitch with your middle finger and thumb and you're going to make a chain of three. One, two, three. That's going to count as your first double crochet for the next row. And now you're going to make a double crochet into the stitch that you're holding, which is the fourth chain from the hook. Go ahead and yarn over and then go into that fourth chain from the hook. Make your double crochet. And then that counts as your first two stitches. So that first chain three counts as your first double crochet and that counts as your second double crochet. And this will give you a stitch count of 15. So that's my second. I'm going to make a total of five double crochet, one double crochet in each of the first five stitches. So that's three. four and five. So you can see I have one, two, three, four, five double crochet. Now you make your single crochet. So five single crochet. And then make five, one double crochet in the next five stitches or the last five stitches. Then the rest is made the same way. We're going to complete the wave, so we're going to chain three, turn the work, 
Make your double crochet into the next stitch. Complete your five double crochet. And then your five single crochet and then your last five double crochet. So this is what my work looks like so far. Now you're going to go ahead and chain one, turn your work, and then you're just going to make your single crochet into the back loop of the next stitch just like you, you've done before. Complete your single crochets and then start making your next wave. And you're going to continue this until you get three waves or two, four, six rows to complete your collar. This is what my collar looks like when I'm finished. And I'm going to go ahead and just bury the loose yarn end, the short one. I left a fairly long loose yarn end where I finished off for sewing the collar onto the pet outfit. And so you just take and weave the yarn through your work to bury it, just like you've done before for your loose yarn ends. And then I'm just going to go back to, I like to bury mine really well. And then you just trim it. Now I'm just going to give you the measurements for mine. So the length is approximately three and a half inches. The width is approximately four and a half inches. Then you're ready to sew the collar on. So before you sew your collar on, make sure that you have it so that the right side is facing up. So here is the back of the pet outfit. I have the right side facing up. Here is my zipper. I'm going to place my collar on here with the right side facing up. I don't want the, the ridged side up. So that's down. Then I'm taking my tapestry needle with the same colored yarn. And the first thing I'm going to do is line up and sew the collar in place. So you just kind of line up the collar and then come up from the wrong side. And then you're just going to sew it in place all along the collar. And again, I'm taking about a centimeter stitch. And then I'm going to tie a knot on the back side. So closer to the zipper, I try to allow some room for my zipper. But once I'm past the zipper, then I just move the collar closer to the edge of the zipper as I sew it in place. Hiding the back of the zipper portion and securing it in place. Then I go back down the zipper edge and I'm going to go back towards the beginning where I first started. Then you want to take and lay the right sides together. So the right sides are now together and you're going to take your tapestry needle and you're just going to sew the edge together. Just go back and forth, sewing the edge together. And you want to leave the last five stitches unworked. Now on one side of the collars, it will be a little bit uneven, so you just kind of line it up, make it line up, and you still leave those last five stitches unworked. Then the collar is all finished. And the next thing you're going to do is just sew on your straps that go around the head. It's that one where you only had the one wave. And I sewed the thick part of the wave on one side. 
and on the other side I'm going to sew the skinny portion of the wave. So I still have the right side up on the pet outfit and I'm just going to take and then sew the strap in place and then bury the loose yarn ends. So now I have both of my straps sewed on for that go around the front of the head. So you can take and you can measure and the two ends here are for sewing it in place around the dog. So if you need to make it a little smaller you can just overlap it behind the larger wave portion. Then you have the two straps that go under the underbelly of the pet outfit and it's made the same way as the back panels. So you only need three waves on this one. Here's one, two, and then three, or two, four, six rows. And I'm going to give you the measurements for this one. And you're going to need two of these. And again, this is the portion that's going to go on the underbelly of the pet outfit. So you need two of these. And again, it measures about six and a half inches by three inches. And then the shorter portion is about two and a half inches. Then after you have both of them, you just take your strap and lay it. You want to leave a gap here for the front arms of the dog. And then I laid mine right over my middle color change, the white color change. And I'm just going to measure down in case you use different colors. So from the top I went approximately five inches down to put my strap. And then I have the ridge portion, the wrong side, on top of the wrong side of the pet outfit. And then I'm going to use the blue color, or whatever, same color as the front or the right side of the pet outfit, so it doesn't show through. And then use the white colored yarn for the white portion to sew the strap in place. Now for mine, after I sewed the straps to the edges, I then took and folded once you see what size you want for your dog, you may want to overlap it. For mine, I'm going to have mine end to end. So this is the right side under the belly. So I'm going to put the two edges together. Make sure you don't twist them. And then I'm just going to sew the two edges together. and then tie a knot and bury the loose yarn end. And then when you bring it back to the right side that's under the belly, this is what it looks like. This is the wrong side and the right side. And then you're just going to sew the front strap the same way, the one that goes around the head. Make sure that you don't twist it. This is the right side and then here is the wrong side. just want to show a close-up of the pet outfit. You can see the collar. There's a zipper that goes along the back of the outfit. You'll also learn a new stitch. This is called the wave stitch. There's a separate video tutorial for the matching collar. This is the wave stitch and I made a collar out of it, a dog collar. There's also a separate video tutorial for this large crochet Siberian Husky dog. This one I made the eyes 
out of felt and I used one of the sequins similar to how I made my crochet mermaid doll eyes. Here are the measurements if you want to write down the sizes. I also have this page available for free download on my Helen May Crochet YouTube channel Facebook group files. 